Hi everyone, Barry here from Matusa Crafts, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based here in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me today for another Fun Fold Friday video tutorial. For today's Fun Fold, I'm going to be showing you how to make a pop-up front panel step card. Okay, and I'm going to be using it with the Peaceful Deer stamp set and the Deer Builder Punch, available from the new mini catalogue from August till December 2021. If you would like to see more videos like this, please remember to give us the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere down over here. And please make sure you turn on the all notifications button as well to be notified when we go live or post something new. We go live twice a week on a Wednesday and a Sunday, and we bring you these videos, these fun full Fridays with you every Friday. So I'm gonna crack on, I'm gonna get started and show you how easy it is to make this pop-up front panel step card. Have fun, relax, sit back, enjoy, and let's crack on. Okay, so to make this card, you're going to need to take yourself some cardstock. So I've got myself some real red here. This is measuring 15 centimeters by A4. So if you're using this in US sizes, then you, you still use your A4, but it will just be a little bit shorter on your tab on one side, so don't cut anything down. So it's 15 centimeters by A4. So in inches, that is five and seven eighths of an inch by A4. You would also need yourself some Misty Moonlight. So this is measuring 10.1 by 10.1 centimeters or four by four inches. Some basic white, which is measuring 9.6 by 9.6, or three and three quarters and three and three quarters of an inch. You will need um, some designer series paper. Now the designer series paper I've used is from the Peaceful Prints designer series paper pack, which is free of charge during celebration with a qualifying order of 45 pound or more. So if you'd like to see more of this, then check out one of our previous videos, which um, just from actually last night, uh, or from Wednesday of this week, then um, we have shown you some more of this and we've got a few videos with this in here as well. So if you want to see the whole pack, go and check out those videos. Um, but this is what you can get free of charge. I think it's a really, really nice paper pack. So I'm going to be using this one here with the deer prints on it. Okay, this is measuring 14.5 centimetres by 14.5 centimetres or 5 and 11 sixteenths of an inch by 5 and 11 sixteenths of an inch. So you've got one of those and this strip here is measuring 14.5 centimetres by 5 or that is five and 11 sixteenths by two inches. Okay, so that's all you need and a little bit of scrap for doing some stamping and punching later on. All right, so I'm gonna take the red first of all and I'm gonna do some scoring for you. Really, really simple. I'll go through the centimeters first and then I will go through the inches. So first things first, you need to score this at 15 centimeters. Then you then need to take that over to 18 centimetres. Then 23.5 centimetres. And then 26 and a half centimetres. Okay, so that was in centimetres. So let's go through that again. So it was 15, 18, 23.5 and 26.5. Now in inches, that will be five and seven eighths of an inch, seven one eighths of an inch, nine and a quarter inches, and 10 and seven eighths of an inch, okay? And that will be your card base done. Then we want to do, do some folding and burnishing. So this is the side I want to fix. So normally your natural thing is you want to then fold all of them in where the, well I do anyway, where it's the raised line, you fold in. But for this one, for the first score, I want to then fold it against itself because, or you want to you want to fold everything against itself because it's the way it's gonna go. So you're gonna fold this one in, fold and burnish, fold and burnish the next one, fold and burnish that one, fold and burnish that one because this is the part which is gonna be on display here. And then that's gonna create ourselves a little box like this. All right, we're not gonna stick anything down just yet. Well, I've not stick this to it just yet because we need to decorate this with our designer series paper. So we've got this bit of designer series paper which is gonna get stuck on inside like this. So go ahead and go and grab your glue 
and stick this down. And then this bit of designer series paper, this one right here, gets stuck on this front panel like this. So you can go ahead and you can go and stick that down as well. So did you see how I just, um, I'm just gonna go through and make sure you just explain that a little bit more. So one's on that side, don't be tempted to stick it on there because it will then end up being on the inside. So you then need to, whatever that is, turn it over and then stick it to the back side over here. Because then when you fold it, it then is on show. All right, so just pay attention to that one when you're coming to that part. What I'm gonna do next is I am going to do some stamping. And I'm gonna stamp here in crumb cake. And I am going to stamp my deer. Now the deer on this, I think, is you've got several, you've got two deers on here. You've got this one and you've got this one here. So this is just an outline. And this one here has got this writing in the middle here. So it's Oh What Fun is what it says on that. And I'm just going to now ink this up and stamp this down. When you get a new photopolymer stamp set, make sure you stamp it several times and you give the photopolymer a good old clean before you use it to stop the ink from pooling. Because the first time I stamped this, it didn't look very good, so you need to do it a few times. And if you've got a stamp which has got writing on it, like this, which has got very fine lines, don't use a juicy ink pad. If you've got an ink pad which is really juicy, it's gonna fill in the detail on that line, on that wording and it's not gonna stamp very well. So you need you need to make sure you're using a non-juicy ink pad. So if it's a brand new ink pad, you may struggle with this one. So you may just need to just do stamp on, stamp off a few times, okay? So I've done that and I am just going to then stamp that down And can you see what I mean there? See, so if it was too juicy, it would have filled in that writing. So you've got, oh, what fun. Really, really nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my punch, which is called notes with this, and I'm just gonna punch this out. I'm not gonna worry about the antlers here. I'm not gonna decorate it with the antlers. I'm just gonna do it with the deer. All right. And that there is that cute little deer. Okay, so that's ready to decorate the card later on. I am also going to stamp the, stamp a rabbit. So I've got a rabbit here. And I'm gonna stamp this in Memento. Actually, first things first, I'm gonna stamp it in the crumb cake. because so I'm gonna choose the best one. So crumb cake first. And then I'm gonna then stamp this in Memento. And I will see what one looks best in a moment. Okay, I'm um, just gonna let that dry for one second before I do a little bit of shading and coloring. Once that's had a little bit of time to dry off, I've just got myself here a light crumb cake. And all I wanna do is I just want to just add a little bit of shading on this bunny. Nothing, nothing too complicated, just a little bit of shading here. I'm gonna keep the bunny white. Now there is no dye for this one here, so I'm gonna have to fussy cut this out, but it is really, really simple. So I'm either gonna go with the one with the black, or I'm gonna go with the the one which is in tone on tone. Now I'm actually thinking that the tone on tone might be a slightly better one to use because my thinking is it's, it doesn't stand out. Because there's no black stamping on this one here, 
it blends, it's, um, it matches. So I'm just, I think I'm actually gonna stick with that one here. It's just an idea, I just wanted to see what it looked like in the black, but I do actually think I prefer the tone on tone stamping. So what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm just gonna grab my snips and I'm gonna fussy cut this out really, really quickly. It's so simple. And there we have it, there is the bunny rabbit cut out right there. It's really cute. So those two, pop those to one side and we will then do the rest of the decoration for this card. So what I'm gonna do first is I want to then stick this part down to this. So what I wanna do is I wanna pop some glue on this panel right here. When you're going to stick this down, you can, don't be tempted to fold it all flat and stick it down like this because it will stick it in the wrong position. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure you fold this one down and then glue on the back here. Then when you open this up, it will then be in exactly the correct position for you. And that's just a good way so you know that it's gonna fold flat as well. Or alternatively, you do it the other way around. So you have one gap here and then a bigger one here and then glue on that back one and that's obviously how it's naturally going to fold flat anyway so you can do it either or but just be aware that you only want to be seeing one of these panels not both of them when you're sticking it down so i've just got one panel here and then the rest is underneath so when you pop it in an envelope, it was going to fold flat like this anyway. And then when it opens up, it's in the correct position, like so. Now there are other variations of this particular card. We can pop some DSP on the top here if you want to as well. And on the other bit, we can come up and then we can then go over and down. But I found that that's, well, it makes sense in the moment, but I found I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to cover up this lovely paper at the back here. So I've just left this going to be as a pop-up panel going on the front. So when we come to stick it down, that part is going to go like that. And like I say, some variations have a bit going across and then down to make it into two boxes. I quite like it this way, so we're not actually losing any of that paper. All right, so that's going to be our next part. So we're going to do some stamping here now. So what I wanna do is, first things first, is I have got myself some colors. So I've got myself an Evening Evergreen. I have got some Balmy Blue. And I have got myself some Real Red. And I've also got a little bit of Smoky Slate and a Bumblebee here. So I'm going to do something with those two afterwards. But the three main colours um, are these ones here. And then you can stop if you want to. and then you Or you can then do the next part, which I'm going to do, depending on your level and where you want to take it to. All right. So I've got my trees, which are these ones here. So you get four trees, individual trees here. So one, two, three, four. And all I've done is I've just gone and lined them up on my block. And I'm gonna stamp these in Evening Evergreen. And then I'm going to then just pop them down like this, to create like a little forest going back backwards. Okay, so I've got that there inked up and this evening evergreen works lovely for these just need to that's it pop those down like that let's make sure that connects nicely because they are solid stamps so you just need to make sure the ink connects with the paper and then we can then bring that off. So that there 
is the first bit done. So you've kind of created yourself like this little forest and going back. Then what we're going to do is I am then going to get myself some real red and I'm going to stamp Merry Christmas. So I've got Merry Christmas in real red and I will then pop this. in the centre of the trees, like so, like so. So we've got that there, all right. And to finish that off, I'm gonna take some balmy blue and I'm gonna then just take these and I'm gonna take the um, snowflakes and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go in at a slight angle and then go like that over the top of the sentiment and I'm gonna then rotate it round go again rotate it round and I'm gonna go across the page like that okay and if I've got one like that. So you've kind of like gone across, so we've added that snowflake sentiment or snowflake stamp just across the sentiment. And that there is all you need to do with that one if you want to. Okay, so depending on your level and where you want to take this to, that then can then get matte and layered onto this. And then can then get stuck onto your card like that. And then you've got yourself your pop-up card ready to go. But I'm going to just take this to just one more level on this one. So what you're going to need to take is some scrap paper, which I have got here. And what I've done is I've created I've created some hills on this. So I've just got some paper and I've just snipped some hills into it. I'm going to be doing some stamping here and I've got myself some blends. So this is where the bumblebee comes into this, your smoky slate, and we're going to use the real red once again. So I'm going to take my grey to start off with and I'm going to create myself a little bit of a landscape. So I'm just going to pick up some grey with my blending brushes. All right, and then I'm just going to then line this up with the base of the tree. like that and I'm going to start on the scrap and then bring it down and I just want to put a light dusting down I don't want to go too heavy with this just a light dusting over over this and if sometimes if you with your brushes if you kind of like just take the end and then go in a bit more concentrated on the ends and then do the concentration and then just be a little bit more concentrated in one area. That would just make things slightly darker for you. And then when you remove it, what you've got here is you have just created yourself this little this little hill. Not much, don't you don't need to do much on this at all. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back on these and pick up some more ink. Start off first and then come down. I'm just doing small lines here, just concentrating it into a small area. Just to add a little bit of shading, that's enough there. Pick a little bit more, do some more at the top here. So just tiny little heels. Okay, and then last one. going to make it a little bit just to intensify it a little bit over this end over here so come back over again What's that? so can you see what's happened there is that you just created these little snow drifts underneath those trees all right so that's the scenery for the base then what we want to do is we want to do the sky. So this is where the bumblebee comes in. 
So we're going to make a nice warm Christmas card here. So I'm going to grab my brush, brush again. I'm going to pick up some bumblebee and gently go in. It's better to go in softly with this rather than going in too hard too soon. Make sure you dab off the paper first and then very lightly bring this over onto your card and lightly, I can't emphasize this enough, lightly dust your card. We don't want to come down, we just want to come down the sides a little bit, intensify at the top and then come down the sides a little bit and then just gently bring this down. We don't want to do too much. Take most of the excess off the, the stronger color and then just gently bring it in. Okay, so that's that one done. I'm now gonna grab my red, grab my blending brush again, pick up some more, this is a strong color. So dab off and then off the page and then just gently bring it in. And then create like this nice warm sunset, winter sunset picture. If we want to intensify it a little bit, we can go in a little bit stronger, say in the corners. And I'm just kind of like kissing that paper. I'm not being too heavy with this at all. You see, most of the most of the ink is going onto the scrap paper, and I'm just dusting it on it ever so slightly. I just want to intensify my yellow a little bit, so I'm going to bring my bumblebee back in once more. And then I'm just going to take most of it off and I just want to intensify it in the centre there. Just a little bit. And let's just touch up with the red just one last time. And there we have it. All right. So that there is how you can create yourself a nice winter scene, a warm winter scene with your blending brushes. So once you've done that, we can then mat and layer that onto the piece of cardstock here. So this is the Misty Moonlight cardstock. And then what we can then do is we can then go ahead and we can then stick this to this. So the best thing I found with this one to make sure you get this evenly placed is to have it flat, line the top up more or less with the top, just come down a fraction and then you know that's the area where you're gonna pop the glue. So I'm gonna pop the glue on this lower part, try not to come up too high but I found that that's a good way of doing it for the positioning. So get your left and the right correct, but then you can then get your, get your equal distance from your left and your right here. And then line it up with straight along the top. Like so. Right, and then when that pops up, that there, just create that and we've got this nice little channel going in between like so and fold flat for postage. So just to finish this one off, we have got our deer here, which I think that deer looks perfect over there. And we will then pop that deer going on here. I will pop them, I think on at least this one here onto some dimensionals. So for this one, I'm going to be using the mini dimensionals. I think it just fits the body of this deer a bit easier. That one can then get stuck. Down here like this, kind of almost just dancing and 
flying onto the page. We have this little bunny sat down here, but kind of just coming off the scene, just down there by those trees, like that. So there we have it. There is today's card with the um, Peaceful Deer's Peaceful Deer stamp set and our um, front panel step card. This one right there with a little bit of blending to create a nice winter scene. Lovely. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. Please give us a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up if you have liked what you have seen. Please remember to also hit that subscribe button as well for future updates and hit that all notifications bell to be notified when we bring you another live video. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, until next time, so same time, same place next week, next Friday, 6 p.m., we will have another Fun Fold Friday for you. Thank you all for watching. Um, take care for now. And we will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.